Welcome to Health on Monday. My name is Joy Mochache. You are watching the Y254 channel, specifically Y on Y in the morning. And do remember, if you want to talk to us, if you want to interact with us, you can do so. And if you want to ask any questions, and if you want to also share some of the things that you are going through, specifically on the topic that we are going to be discussing, you can do so on our Facebook and Twitter. That is going to be ha hashtag Health on Monday and hashtag Y in the morning on our Facebook and our Twitter. That is Y254 underscore channel on Instagram. And do remember that on YouTube, you can find us as well. And do remember to subscribe. And right now, we are going to be discussing a particular um, illness that we are calling ulcerative colitis, ulcerative colitis. I have just recently learned about this, but it is also affecting our youth. This is a youth channel and that's why we have discussed, we have uh, decided to focus on this particular issue. And our guest today, his name is Joseph Ngigi, and he is undergoing this particular problem. And we'd like to get to know him and we'd like to also get to know what his experiences have been on this particular issue. Karibu sana, Mr. Ngigi. Thank you so much. Oh, we're glad to have you on our set. Yeah. Yes. And so please explain to our viewers, those who do not know, what ulcerative colitis is. <clears throat> so um, ulcerative colitis is an autoimmune condition yes. that results from an overactive immune system. Okay. So in the case of ulcerative colitis, the immune mm -hmm. system attacks the colon. So instead of attacking disease-causing microorganisms, uh -huh. it attacks the walls of the large intestines. Wow. Yeah, so that's okay. basically what ulcerative colitis is. Okay. It's as a result of an overactive immune system uh -huh. where the immune system now acts or attacks the colon, the yes. walls of the colon. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I see. So mm -hmm. um, some of the symptoms are um, diarrhea. Diarrhea. And because that attacking on the walls of the colon results in inflammation, mm -hmm. those inflammations will most mostly have ulcers or sores, and those ulcers bleed. Mm. So most of the time you'll have diarrhea with mm. bleeding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. I see. And, and if I may ask, yes. how long have you been experiencing this uh, terrible problem? I've had this since um, 2016. 2016. It was officially diagnosed in 2017, May. Okay, so you've had it for uh, since 2016, yeah. and then you went to the doctors, and then that's when they officially diagnosed it and yeah. said that this is what you have. Yeah. Okay. The thing about ulcerative colitis is it mimics so many other conditions. Ah, yes, yes. So it takes really long to get the correct diagnosis. I see. Yeah, because personally I was diagnosed, I think, about four times with different conditions. Okay, may I ask, yeah. what are some of the conditions yeah, that the they diagnosed time, you? The first time um, I was told it was um, typhoid. Wow. And so I was on treatment for typhoid for about two to three weeks. Okay. But the symptoms kept growing worse. Okay. So the second time I went to the doctor and I said, no, it's not improving. So the second time I was told it's brucella. Wow. Then I was on medication for 48 days. 48 days? Yeah, 48 days, with an injection every day. Mm. Then the third time I was told it was gastritis. And I was on medication for very long. And all this while my symptoms kept going worse. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's what, that's what was happening in 2016 until they 2016. finally found a real issue. And when they found a real issue, that, that, that means that there were some symptoms that you were experiencing. Yes. What are some of those symptoms you are going through that made them differentiate between the gastritis and all the other things and said that this is now definitely ulcerative colitis? What were the symptoms and what are the symptoms? The most outstanding symptom is diarrhea with blood. Diarrhea with blood. Yes. I like see. You go for a bowel movement okay. and the whole thing is just Blood. blood. It's just blood. And wow. because of that constant loss of blood, yes. there is anemia associated with it. Because now you lose oh. a lot of blood. Mm. You begin passing out in the morning, passing out during the day. Mm. You grow very weak, so there's a lot of fatigue. 
your skin becomes very pale, very pale. Mm. Yeah, so those are some of the, the most outstanding symptom I'd say is diarrhea with mm. blood. That is probably, you're saying that that is most outstanding. Yes. That's the that's one that's the hardest to deal with. Yes. Okay. Yes, diarrhea with blood. I see. And it's like constant and it's, um, we're talking about 15 to 20 bowel motions in a day. 15 to 20 bowel motions in a day. Mm -hmm. And after every bowel motion, one has to go and release themselves. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Ah, I see. And um, Polly, about all that you're going through, yeah, you. and if we can continue, yeah. Tafadali, so that we can continue to raise awareness, because I know you're not alone. Sure. I know that there are others who are watching and others who may not be watching, who might watch on our YouTube later on, who are mm -hmm. going through this. Um, maybe we can discuss how you felt when you first found out that this is what you had. What, what was the first feeling that you had, maybe your first emotion? Um, first of all, I'd like to say, um, because of the trickiness in diagnosing ulcerative colitis, it's very, very important if you have such symptoms to see a gastrointestinal specialist. Mm -hmm. because that's the only way it can be diagnosed uh, correctly and in good time. Mm -hmm. So for me, when it was first uh, diagnosed and it was mentioned to me, I had, of course, I had read on the internet, uh, I had tried searching my symptoms, and I kind of had a clue what I was going through and what was ailing me. So when it was mentioned, it was not really a surprise, but it was a relief to me because the thing about ulcerative colitis is with the right treatment um, you can manage symptoms so for me when it was mentioned and i began on treatment i actually saw improvement on the very first day i began treatment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i remember um after the because normally when you have very uh, mild symptoms they start you off on steroids steroids yeah and the steroids okay. work uh, instantly only okay. that you cannot be on them for long because of the side effects Uh -huh. but they work instantly and i remember i got back my energy instantly mm -hmm. and i felt like all of all all, all all together all of a sudden i could even um slash grass <laughs> i felt i had energy instantly <laughs> i felt like i had my life back instantly yeah. i felt really nice i mm -hmm. had not felt that for a very very long time because yeah. my life was bed yes bathroom bed and bed, bathroom. bathroom yes it was really hard to go about my normal day-to-day -day activities. Right. Because with 20 ball motions, honestly, no. it's very hard to even concentrate. The mm. embarrassment is just too much. Mm. You cannot even go out in public because you're always anxious. You don't know when the next ball movement will hit. Yes, of course. So with the correct treatment, I think it gives one some sort of relief. Yeah. You're able now to live life like a normal person. Okay. Yeah. I see. And um, you said that uh, when you first found out in 2016, they gave you the steroids and it works immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there a different treatment that you're using right now? Yeah. Now, apart from the steroids, you have to be on what they call maintenance therapy. Maintenance therapy. Yeah. Could you maybe explain what that is? Yeah, yeah, sure. So these are drugs that um, aim at uh, controlling the inflammation in the intestines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you are supposed to be on these uh, medications for, I'd say, for life to prevent recurrence of this condition. Yeah. And some of those uh, include aminosalicylates and uh, the others we call immunomodulators. Because remember we started by saying It's a condition that results from an overactive immune system. Yes. So mostly what the doctors will do, they'll try to bring down your immune, immune system. system. Yeah, that controls ulcerative colitis, but there's also a problem with that. Because when you lower your immunity, that means you now become susceptible to other infections. Of course. Yeah. I see. Yeah. And so by lowering your immune system in order to help the yeah. ulcerative colitis, yes. you're actually increasing the chances of you getting other diseases because now your immune system is lower. That is the greatest challenge with ulcerative colitis. Right. So now you will control ulcerative colitis, but that leaves you open to all sorts of infections. 
Like I remember in 2017, after the diagnosis, I got the treatment and I was okay for about three months. Mm -hmm. And then after three months... On steroids? Yeah, I was on steroids and a couple of uh, other maintenance therapy. They also give you antibiotics to mm -hmm. fight infections. Yeah. They also give you... Um, personally, I started on what we call mesacol. Mesacol? Yeah, it worked for only three months. And okay. after three months, it stopped working. So, um, as a result of that immunomodulation, by the end of 2017, I felt sick again. Mm -hmm. But this time it was not the ulcerative colitis, it was TB. Because my immune system was very low, it was yeah. very weak. Right. Now the problem is, anytime you have any other infection, it does not manifest immediately. What you will see are the symptoms of ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. So any other infection will trigger the ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. So if you had stopped bleeding, if you get mm -hmm. another infection, mm -hmm. you will not notice the symptoms for that infection. It will be the UC, it will be the ulcerative colitis. So you'll start bleeding again, you'll start having diarrhea, uncontrollable diarrhea, you'll start having fatigue, weight loss, night sweats, fever, chills, and all that. So by the end of 2017, I was down again this time with TB. Mm -hmm. And, and so when you were undergoing the symptoms, you thought it was something else? No, it's very hard to tell it's something else because remember, you will just be seeing most of your ulcerative colitis symptoms. So when you're undergoing the symptoms, you thought, oh, this is just my, uh, the ulcerative colitis acting yeah. up. Yeah. It's just acting we up. We call it a flare-up. A flare-up. Yeah. Ah, so then so when you were having the flare-up, yeah. unfortunately, what was truly happening is that you had contacted TB. Sure. Right. Sure. I see. And it took long to even diagnose the TB because I had a cough and I assumed it's just a normal cough, maybe cold. And so they kept giving me syrups, trying to treat the cough. And I continued with my therapy with the, with, with the, with the ulcerative colitis. But I was not getting better. I lost mm. a lot of blood. I was really pale. You could tell I was very, very pale. My hands, my face, and everyone was wondering what's happening. What's wrong? And it was until now I couldn't do anything else. Like, um, I had lost so much blood. My HB was at about four. Which what is, is, really what is your HB? HB is the hemoglobin level. Hemoglobin level. Normal levels start, I think, from around 13. Mm -hmm. Mine was at four. Normal level is 13, yes. yours was 4. Yes. Wow. So when I went to see the doctor, because I was not improving, there was no change, I was taking medication, but it was not working. So the doctor decided to check my HB, and they found out it was at 4. That was an emergency, so they sent me straight to the emergency. I was admitted for blood transfusion. Right. So during the blood transfusion is when I explained that I've been having this cough and all these things. And they did um, a couple of tests, and that's when it was discovered, oh, I actually contracted TB. So when we began treatment for TB, surprisingly, um, the ulcerative colitis uh, symptoms went, went away immediately. And I started improving during that treatment, treatment period. Treatment for TB? Yes. By the end of the six months, I was doing really well. I had gained weight. Mm -hmm. um, after the transfusion, I had my energy back. My skin had changed. Mm -hmm. So really, mm -hmm. the problem normally is um, getting the correct diagnosis because these ulcerative colitis treatments mm -hmm. will come with all these other infections. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. And once you had contacted the TB and you said... They were able to give you medication, yeah. which eventually got rid of that, yeah. and that now you are free of that. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. when you are experiencing symptoms of ulcerative colitis, um, I, I, I don't like to ask people their age, but when it comes to ages, do you think, or from your experience, do older people or do younger people experience you see i had you refer to it as you see yeah. and um for the benefit of the show we're going to continue referring to ulcerative colitis as you see and so when you first found out that you had the you see do you think that older people and younger people maybe they experience this quite differently or the symptoms completely the same um the thing about you see is that it manifests in the younger generation more than the older people 
Wow. Yeah, so ages between 15 mm -hmm. to 35, that's where most of the diagnosis is done. Wow. As compared to the older generations. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So it's mostly diagnosed between 15 to 35, which is what we call the youth, youth. group. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And this being a youth channel, I'm glad that you brought that up sure. because a lot of the people that are watching right now are within that age group, 15 to 35 or 18 to 35. And so a lot of them that are watching, I'm sure, are quite interested. And do remember, if you do have anything that you'd like to reach out to us, even some questions that you have for Mr. Joseph Gigi, do do so on our um, on our <laughs> social media handles. That is hashtag Health on Monday, hashtag Why in the Morning, and that is going to be on our Facebook and our Twitter. That is Y254 channel, Instagram Y254 underscore channel. And going right back, mm -hmm. if I can just ask, when it comes to affecting your daily activities. Yeah. How has it been like? Do you find, um, are you in university right now? I'm currently working. You're currently working? Yeah, it was, it's sad that it was diagnosed immediately I started working. Yeah, I mean. yeah. okay. Yeah. Like Immedi a month into my job, mm. that's when it was diagnosed. Right, yeah. right, okay. And so how has, be, how has it affected your work and your workplace, has it, by the way, and it could have had no effect, uh, no effect at all, and do feel free to say so, but if it has had any effect, what has it had? What kind of effect has it had? I'd say it has had a um, pretty negative effect on my work, mm -hmm. but I'm really grateful for my workplace, because mm -hmm. uh, with time they have understood the condition and they have learned to accommodate me. Mm -hmm. But say, uh, because of the the blood loss and the issue of fatigue, it becomes really hard to operate in the mornings. When you wake up, it's normally really, really hard. Uh, there's a lot of fatigue, so getting out of bed is normally quite a challenge. And sometimes you will even pass out in the bathroom when you're taking your shower. Wow. Or wake up and can't even have breakfast, you're wow. just throwing up. So mornings are normally really bad, but it gets better during the day. As right. the day progresses, right? Yeah. So there's that um, negative impact, I'd say, because of the energy levels mostly, mm. and there's also absenteeism because you have to keep seeing the doctor. There are just days you can't get out of the house, so you have to work from home. Of course. Yeah. So. Of course. Mm. All right. And uh, if I may ask, now that we've talked about the effect when you're at work, what about when it comes to family? Um, I know it's a bit of a personal question, but sometimes when it comes to health issues, we come to learn that it not only affects us, it also affects those around us, especially the people that we love and the people that love us. How has that been for your family, if I may ask? Um, my family has been very, very supportive. I That's must great. say that. That's great. So they really support me. Mm. And what I like about my family is that everyone is willing to learn more about you see what is this thing so how do we help so they go out of their way to do their own research and they have learned over time how to deal with me how mm. to support me mm. so i'm really grateful but i know it can be quite a challenge because it's a very hard condition to understand sometimes mm -hmm. when you're especially on steroids mm. Um, steroids are basically hormones and they sometimes affect the way you think, the way you do things, the way you react. So sometimes you'll be very moody, you don't want to talk to anyone. Right. And I'd say my family has learned to deal with that a lot, so they know how to deal with me. And I'm quite sure it's not the same for everyone. Sometimes people don't understand. Sometimes yeah. people will not understand why you're spending so much time in the bathroom. They yes. will not understand. Why are you so moody? Exactly. What gives you the right to be moody? Exactly. Why can't you control your moodiness? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They will not understand why all of a sudden you don't have energy. Yeah. Sometimes someone will think you're lazy. Sometimes, right. yeah, sometimes people will think you're very choosy with the food you eat, you know? And that's not the case at all. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's just diet simply is also um, something else that is quite major in terms of management of UC. Okay. Because you don't want to eat something that will irritate your colon. Okay. So you have to be very, very choosy with diet. Right. And that is an area I think most people don't understand. Mm. We will touch on diet sure. in just a little bit sure. once we're done with um, talking about support from family. Yeah. Because I noticed something really wonderful. I noticed that your sister was the one that escorted you here. Sure. 
And um, it was really lovely of her, I think, because even when I was trying to get in touch with you, trying to get uh, to know more about the problem that you're going through, it was her that I spoke to first. And I could hear the, I don't know, her voice is quite, you would never tell that she has a brother that is going through something like this. Yeah, yeah she's quite chirpy, quite energetic. Yeah. And I think you're quite lucky to have that kind of support. Yeah. You have mentioned that there are family members in other families sometimes who don't understand such things. And they might ask, how come us we have to eat this and you, how come you're being so choosy with your diet? Yeah. Can we talk more about that diet? Diet, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so as I said, um, ulcerative colitis is inflammation of the colon and those inflammations have ulcers on them or sores and sometimes wow. they bleed yes so you don't want to eat something that is going to be rough on your colon or really hard to digest so diet really should be i wouldn't say there is a standard diet for you see what works for someone else might not work for me what mm. i tolerate someone else might not tolerate because it also depends on the severity of the condition but the bottom line is um, everyone must strive towards eating soft food so keep it as soft as possible but at the same time very healthy because you must also remember to include all the food groups vitamins proteins all those things minerals mm, starch carbs starch. Yeah. yeah yeah without forgetting either of them yes. but now it must be consumed in a form that is very soft and very easy to digest. I see. Yes. I see. All right. And, um, you know, we don't have too much time. Yeah. Maybe right now we can, now that we've kind of understood what uh, you see ulcerative colitis is, and we've kind of understood the impacts it has on work and family, and the impact that work and family has on people that are going through it. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the initiative that you started. I'm oh, yeah. quite proud about the man that we've had on set today because he has started a wonderful initiative, and I think it's one of its kind in Kenya. I don't think there's another. I so. did try to do. Re I did try to research. I couldn't find another. So you are founder and CEO. Yes, can we please talk about the HOPE initiative that you have started for UC? Yeah, so after, after the diagnosis, I went, um, as I said, I went and tried to check around, see was there a group, was there someone going through the same thing around here? Mm -hmm. And sadly, I couldn't find. Okay. So I decided, uh, with all this struggle that I've gone through trying to get someone who can at least um, shed more light on this condition, why don't I start something? Mm -hmm. So I decided to start uh, Hope for Ulcerative Colitis Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, really thankful to God that it has grown and it has helped me raise awareness. So I use that platform to share this um, UC thing, to share the symptoms, to share with people what this thing is, and uh, to basically make people understand why sometimes I behave the way I do. And that has really helped me because mm -hmm. now no one judges me. I've mm -hmm. had people um, get to learn about UC, to understand what UC is, mm -hmm. and it has turned out to be a very successful venture. People are supporting me, people are reaching out to me. Wow. And uh, surprisingly, people have started reaching out saying, hey, I'm also going through this thing. I also have UC. I have UC. Yeah. What worked for you? How are you managing it, you see? Right. And that really, to me, is uh, something I'm really grateful about and I'm oh. so proud about. That is amazing. Yeah. And I think you're on the right path. Yeah, sure. And I do think that um, uh, I, I don't like preaching. or, you know. <laughs> But yes, I do believe that sometimes when things do get hard in life, and sometimes we ask ourselves, why is it me? Why, why have you chosen me to go through what I'm going through? Sometimes I do believe that there is a reason. And you could be the mantle that people need to hang on to. You just never know. And here you are. You started hope for ulcerative colitis. And here you have people reaching out to you. And maybe this could be your purpose. Maybe this is exactly what God meant for you. And this is something I strongly believe in. And so sometimes I don't necessarily shun the hard things in life. I don't stop them. I'm like, OK, that was hard and that's messed up. But I know there's a reason why I'm going through it. And I do hope that that's what you feel. Sure. And is there any projects that are coming up that we need to raise awareness for? Um, majorly, currently, what I'm doing is uh, raising funds. I'm scheduled to go for treatment mm -hmm. to India. Um, so majorly, that has been what we've been up to currently. 
Mm. Um, but in future, we look to have uh, more projects for yeah. creating awareness. It's treatment in India. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we are basically raising funds for that. Okay. Yeah. And um, well, before we do close down the show, I'd like for you to let people know that is your camera. Yeah. In which way they can get those funds yeah. to you or to the organization or to the initiative yeah. um, through social media or through yeah. a phone number, yeah. please do let them know. So, for if you have any contributions, um, our MPESA number is 0725 451 900. We are on Facebook as Hope for Ulcerative Colitis Kenya. If you log into Facebook and go direct to that page, you'll find more information concerning our fundraiser, you'll find a pay bill number, and you can support us in whichever way. Could you repeat the website, please? Um, the, the Facebook page is Hope for Ulcerative Colitis Kenya. Hope for Ulcerative Colitis Kenya. Capital and that's H, where? capital U, capital K. And that's where they will find all the information. You will find all the information. You can also reach out to us, chat with us. We'll be glad to respond to you. Okay. Is there any other way they can reach out apart from that Facebook page? Uh, apart from the Facebook page. So we are on all the social media channels. Okay. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. Uh, we also have a website, Hope for Ulcerative Colitis Kenya. You can also find us there. And I've also said our, our MPESA line is 0725. Four five one nine zero zero. Please repeat the number. Zero seven two five four five one nine zero zero. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank you so much for coming on set, and uh, maybe you could say something to yeah. anyone that is undergoing this problem because I do know that when it comes to issues, sometimes it does help to hear that someone else is going through it and how they're managing it. Mm -hmm. You could take maybe 30 seconds to do so, mm -hmm. and then we can have our last few questions and sure. then we can close down the interview. Sure. So for anyone going through this, um, I'd like to say it gets better. The thing is, don't, don't keep quiet with your issues. Step out, talk about them. If you see diarrhea that lasts more than a few days, please get checked and get checked by a gastrointestinal specialist. It will help if you're diagnosed early in good time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll thank you for that. And uh, lastly and finally, <laughs> I have seen that um, once again your sister did come with you, and I can't bring her on set right now, but are there ways in which family is helping you continue with this initiative that you have created? Are there parts in which they're taking part, place in? Or? Yeah, I'd say family is um, really supporting me. In terms of finances, um, the thing about ulcerative colitis is that it's also very expensive to manage because with the medication and uh, with the diet, it's a very expensive uh, venture. So family really supports me in that area, finances uh, to cater for my medical bills, finances to cater for my diet, finances to make it for my appointments and all that. So really family has really stood by me. I see. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Right. Yeah. And speaking of finances, yeah. lastly and finally, yeah. Yeah. you did say something about going to India for yeah. treatment. Yeah. Um, if I may ask, yeah. I know we can never know the outcome of the sure. treatment, sure. but what are we hoping for Hope. during this treatment? Hope. What are we hoping to achieve from this treatment? Um, as I said, uh, UC affects the colon. And uh, sadly, there is no treatment for UC. So it's something you manage. Um, but there is a high success rate uh, of recovery if you get the colon removed, either partially or totally. So they can do the what we call the partial colectomy. They remove part of the colon that is affected. If it's the entire colon, they remove the entire colon. Right. And then they replace that with an artificial sort of rectum. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, I did see, I'm trying to find, because I, I, I could have sworn that there was information about um, the, the amount in which your colon has been affected. Yeah. But for some reason, I can't come across it. It's, it's, it's a three quarter. Three quarters, yeah. yes. Yeah. Three quarters. Yeah. And uh, you said they can't be treated, but it can be managed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I do wish you well. Thank I you I do so wish much. you well, Mr. Ngigi. 
I do wish you well. And when it comes to the Hope for Ulcerative Kenya initiative, mm -hmm. do remember that you can reach out to Mr. Joseph Ngigi on the social media handles that he has shared. And do remember that there is hope when it comes to ulcerative colitis, what we're calling UC. Mm -hmm. There is never, ever, 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 ever any sad ending. And do remember, just because you can't get treated, it doesn't mean you can't manage it. And life can be just as fun. Am I right or wrong? You're right. I'm Very right. right, yeah. right. Oh, okay. And just to finish on a light note, because I feel like right now we're we're, we're talking about something very serious, <laughs> and yeah. um, you know it's morning time, and yeah. we we don't want to put our viewers in such a somber mood. Yeah. Maybe I can ask, yeah. um, what are some of the things you enjoy doing on your pastimes? Oh. Just to get just to get to know Mr. Joseph on a personal level. Sure. Um, I love music. You love music. So listening or playing or both? I listen to I listen to music so much, but I also play piano. Okay. Yeah. So I serve in church. Right. As a band lead. Okay. And I also do my own projects on piano and uh, playing with bands here and there. Yes. So music is part of me. Mm -hmm. I also enjoy cooking. Something I adopted after this UC diagnosis. So I like to prepare my own food, mm -hmm. and that really uh, acts as therapy for me. Cooking is therapy for you. Yeah. Wow. So you do feel like, um, oh my goodness, that's interesting. Cooking yeah. and music. And play. apart from that, I am a techie, so. You're a techie. I what is that? <laughs> oh, techie as in, oh, you like technology. Yeah. So uh -huh. I, I really like technology. So uh -huh. I also do hardware and electronics, so mm -hmm. I program for hardware. Okay. Yeah. I see. We have gotten to know exactly what UC is about. And we have gotten to know a little bit about what Mr. Joseph Gay does. Yeah. And he loves to play the piano. And he is a band leader, leader yeah. when it comes to church. Yeah. And that's what we're getting in a nutshell from him. Yeah. And if you'd like to continue to get to know Mr. Ngigi, you can do so through the social media handles that he had shared. Yeah. If you have any questions for him or for us, you can do so. Make sure you hashtag health on Monday, hashtag why in the morning, and do ask whatever you can about UC. And if you do have anyone, a loved one, or even yourself that are suffering from UC, you ulcerative colitis, please know that you're not alone and that Mr. Ngigi is here with his initiative meant to help you guys champion through this thing. You can hold hands together and you can go through this thing together. Please do remember that you can reach out to me on joy underscore Muchache on Twitter alone. And my name is Joy Muchache. It has been Health on Monday. Coming up next is Youth and Politics with Hilda Wadidi. Do stay tuned in.